Hello, my HD friends. I need to sync up the bottom camera real quick. So you guys are going to have to wait a second while I get this to ding in. By the way, thanks for tuning in. And if you're watching this, then do me a favor and hit subscribe. It's still loading. Give me a minute. Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Sam I B. DeGangi reporting for the media speaks. If I am pointing at you, then you are the live, uh, lower quality, but live streaming show. You over there are the high def, and you are watching the correct views. Member of the media speaks. I'm reporting for the mem. I'm reporting for the media speaks. I should say, and we are going to charge right into the news. Strategist warns of new Russian threat. It would be the greatest blackout in American history. Friends, I'm going to be the oddball here and say that I hope to God that this happens. And I'll explain why in a minute. And it goes beyond my innate hatred for uh, Putin. Do I hate Putin? I despise that piece of human filth. I hate Putin. However, I also hate Obama. And I understand why this scum is doing what he's doing because Obama is also scum. Uh, having said that, let Russia do this. I'm going to get into the story in a minute, but they're threatening to cut off our uranium. Please, Putin, I am begging you to stop the uranium coming into my country. I've been trying to do it for as long as this show has been in existence. I've been trying to do it even longer than that. Um... I am praying that that happens because if that little bastard shuts off our uranium imports, then we're going to drill for oil. And that's what I want to happen so bad it's not even funny. Man is not warming the planet. Man-made global warming is a lie. Somebody put a house beat behind it. Um... ClimateGate.com. It, it's, it's absolutely on the uh, forefront of this. Amid tensions between the United States and Russia in recent months, many international analysts have warned, warned, they say, of consequences that may include everything from thermal nuclear detonations to asymmetric warfare such as financial cyber attacks, weapons of mass destruction, the targeting of the, util targeting of the U national utility grid, which I will concede would be awful. However, the rest of this would be wonderful. Listen to this. The country is rich in nation, uh, natural gas and uh, many other things, but most people don't realize that the Russians also dominate the rare earth metal sectors, which means for all of you that listen to the correct views and listen to the intelligence that I'm trying to give to you, the bot gold, platinum, the bot silver. If Russia shuts off the precious metal supplies, life just got really good for us. Well, also, it says, Russians dominate, dominate the uh, rail earth metal sector, namely the mining of uranium, which any thinking person does not want. Now, Sam, are you saying that you would like to see all the nuclear power plants in America come to a grinding halt? Yes, that is exactly what I'm saying. If that happened, it would be a blessing. America's lights would go out. No, they wouldn't. We would start drilling for oil and we would be self-sufficient in no time at all. It would be the greatest blackout in American history and it would be a godsend. The irony is John Kerry is going out there with Obama and talking about all of these sanctions they're going to put on the Russians. If the Russians wanted, they could pull the rug out from under the American energy matrix and 20% of every five homes in America would be a blackout. That is until we decided to use the drilling rigs and the refineries, which I have been praying for 
since the idiocy of global warming became a common thread in our idiot American minds, because it isn't happening. You have to remember the facts. You can talk about hope and dreams all that you want, but the reality is one that one in every five homes in America is powered by Russian fuel, which we need to change and make it run by American oil, which is exactly what every thinking person wants. Also, let's remember that it says here that Russia mines more uranium on our soil meaning American soil. If that's the case, if they were to get into a pissing match with us, we would simply take the freaking plant off them, which is fine with me too. Although I hate nuclear in any way, shape, matter, or forms. It says Russians produced more on American soil, more uranium mining on American soil was produced than all American companies combined, which means we'd simply take the plants off their Russian asses, which I'm in favor of. Let's shut these damn things down. Thank God it can't hope it happen soon enough for me. Putin, you're a prick. And Obama's a prick, so I'm glad you two have to deal with each other. A uh, CSMonitor.com, the Christian Science Monitor. A nightmare becoming a reality, Iran unveils American drone replica. At least it looks a bit, little bit better than that model airplane that uh, North Korea tried to build. And uh, Kim Jong-un, as in unintelligent, uh, tried to fly it over and pretend it was a real drone. At least this is something you'd actually be worried about. And I've said for a long time that um, Iran has been an ongoing problem. They're trying to create a Fukushima in Iran. They're building a nuclear power plant on an active earthquake zone. And do not get baited into the lie that says that Fukushima was caused by a tidal wave. Fukushima, the meltdown, was caused by the earthquake, even if the water hadn't come in. And that's what Iran's looking at here. But they don't care. I mean, in the name of Allah, you can poison your own people all you want to if you're stupid and you wear a towel on your head. Iran has unveiled its own copy of an American stealth drone that it captured in late 2011, claiming to have cracked the secrets of the Batwing craft and added weapons capabilities. Today, Fars News Agency reported that while Iran's duplicate of the US RQ-170 Sentinel drone was smaller, it also had a bombing capability to attack the U.S. warships if any possible battle. Yeah, because we can't shoot drones out of the sky. Out of the sky, the Americans, uh, yeah, no radar. We'd never see it coming. Go for it, idiot. The story in Persian was headlined, America's Nightmare Has Become a Reality. Well, that's what Obama gets for flying one over there. State television showed footage on Sunday, it said, was of a U.S. aircraft carrier in the Persian Gulf filmed uh, by an Iranian drone. Well, we'd be happy to shoot their drones down, as happy as they are to shoot ours down. The drone replica was unveiled at the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps exhibition on Sunday. Supreme Leader, Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khomeini was briefed on how the drone, its systems, and structure have been reverse engineered. He called it a sweet day. Yeah, well, it'll be a sweet day when your idiot self melts its own country down because you won't listen to common reasoning. The stealth replica would soon take a test flight, an IRCG officer said on Sunday. Aerospace, Aerospace Chief Amir Ali Hajada, Hazada said today that they are working on two more models of the replica drone. And again, our country had no business poking its nose in there, and that's what happens. You get your drone stolen. Engineers with the IRGC were ordered to reverse engineer the captured U.S. drone, which was on a CIA mission to spy on nuclear and military sites, as they should be, because Iran has repeatedly talked about using its uh, nuclear capabilities against its neighbors. Sites in Iran, when it was brought down in Iran, largely intact. Iran reacted with euphoria, trumpeting the capture is an electronic ambush. How many of you watch North Korean documentaries? They got this, this, this ship off of us uh, like 50 years ago, and they're still like, yeah, look how tough we are. We got us a ship 50 years ago, even though America can still kick our ass. Oh, Iran's got a drone. <laughs> 
idiots. Again, I, I, America oversteps its bounds, but let's not lose track of the fact that we're talking about scum leadership in Iran as well. It says, thus the Iranian RQ project was designated, sent an IRGC aerospace officer, according to Fars News. To achieve this, considering the difficulties and flight dynamics, we designed a bird with a smaller size that would be cheaper and simpler and that we have done now. We have done ground tests already, and after this fair, we will do air tests as well. Basically, now they have a drone, and they're under the impression that uh, we won't be able to see them, and they can spy on our ships, even though our ships will blow them out of the sky Let's face it, if Iran's ridiculous leadership can capture one of our drones, then even under the stupidity that is Obama, and that's a lot of stupidity, I'm pretty sure we can capture theirs as well. Uh, it's more of a sad commentary of where we are as a people, regardless of nation. SHTF plan and Mark Slavo, next story here. The anti-surveillance mask can hide you from biometric scanners. And there's a few times every year where I get to say the correct views called one way before anybody else. How far before? Prior to Snowden, I predicted that we would be wearing masks to hide ourselves from Big Brother. Incoming! Sam was right. The U.S. government is spending billions of dollars to ensure that they can monitor and track every single activity in which you engage, be it online or off. The latest attempt to infringe on the personal anonymity comes in the form of what has been referred to as Real ID. Essentially, a social security number for the internet, which is a scam, which would be used to follow you every movement on in, in cyberspace. Coupled with technologies that include email mining, which should be illegal, global positioning systems, predictive behavior analysis, drones over America, links for all of this, by the way, and even eavesdropping via microphones on our cell phones, the ultimate goal is a surveillance state so expansive that Adolf Hitler and Joseph Stalin would be jealous, it says. But just as quickly as government introduces the technologies that are supposed to keep us safe from terrorists, which don't exist, and ourselves, enterprising rebels across the country are working to counter them, and may God bless their souls. In the realm of biometrics, where literally hundreds of thousands of cameras now watch your every move and plug in directly to data mining fusion centers where our activities are analyzed, aggravated and dispatched according to our perceived threats, some might think the system itself has become unbeatable. Short of plastic surgery, how can we modify our faces to disappear from prying government eyes when and made possible with 3D printers. It says, uh, Leo Salvaggio has his way. You'll be able to assume an alternative identity by using a low-tech low strategy, which is, of course, made possible by 3D printers. It says it's simple and it's brilliant, especially considering the fact that Salvaggio's innovation is capable of compromising multi-billion dollar face recognition surveillance systems with the use of an easily obtainable personal prosthetic mask. Basically, you print out your own mask that all have this guy's facial features and hair and eye spacings, and you wear it anywhere you go, and any surveillance system that is a biometric technology, technologically linked up to government's computers will not be able to read you, but will in fact read the person, this uh, Slovigio guy, who has made the mask and not your identity. It says uh, his rubber mask aimed at foiling surveillance cameras features his visage, and if he has his way, plenty of people will be sporting the personal surveillance identity prosthetic in public. It's one of three products made by the Chicago-based artist URME Surveillance Venture dedicated to protecting the public from surveillance and creating a safe space to explore digital identities. In other words, you're going to find people printing off masks that have the faces of other people, like Leatherface from some horror movie, 
just to beat Big Brother. And I am in favor of that in every possible way. Friends, you are listening to The Correct Views. Sam I B. Angie encouraging you and to head out to the Arcadia Grill. Because when you do, you're going to get some of the best food you've ever eaten. And you're going to be eating it on Court Avenue in downtown Can. Ravioli, drinks made right, chicken fingers, you name it, they've got it. And there's nothing you want to do other than fork to mouth. People, I'm telling you, it is that delicious. Uh, they've got breakfasts on the weekends. They are a part of the rejuven rejuvenalization that is downtown Canton. So go to the Arcadia Grill and let them know Sam I.B. sent you. Also, Mike McLaughlin, one of the most cutting-edge uh, fictional writers of our time. You can find him, Mike McLaughlin, on Facebook. He's selling poetry, short stories, novels, you name it, you want to read it. If you're watching this, you're probably not part of stupid America that doesn't read anything. So go to the uh, Facebook.com, look up Mike McLaughlin, and let him know you want to purchase some of his work. It's very, very good. Uh, friends, this is Infowars.com. Cisco CEO sends a letter to Obama complaining about NSA surveillance. For those of you that don't know, it came out just a, a few days ago that the government was intercepting computers. Let's say I own Sam IB's computer. I make Microsoft computers. I make the computer and then I send it to the warehouse. Now, when I told you that that's exactly what I did, I told the truth. However, the government has come in, like Hitler, and intercepted them, taken the computer, modified it in ways that they could sell and spy on you, and then put the computer back for sale in the warehouse so that the warehouse ships it. And the government has, in essence, hacked your computer before you've ever owned it. Cisco's had enough of this. They're not a part of this. So at least now they're trying to backpedal whichever you want to believe. And uh, this is good news. We need more of our companies standing up against our government. That's for sure. Now, Recode, a tech website, posted a letter on Sunday sent by Cisco CEO John Chambers to President Obama. In the letter sent May 15th, Chambers implores Obama to curtail U.S. Uh, NSA surveillance. The letter followed new revelations by Edward Snowden alleging NSA technicians intercept Cisco computers and equipment manufactured by other companies and conveniently install surveillance software to the machines. That sounds nice and legal. That's the American way, isn't it? A document included in the trove of National Security Agency files released with Glenn Greenwald's book, No Place to Hide, details how the agency's Tailored Access Operations Unit and other NSA employees intercept servers, routers, and other network gear being shipped to organizations targeted for surveillance and install covert implant firmware onto them before they're delivered, writes Sean Gallagher for Ars Technica. The document cited in Greenwald's book includes a photograph of NSA employees opening a box intercepted during transit to a targeted customer and installing Beacon firmware with a load station designed specifically for the task. So in other words, those of you that like to claim you're a conspiracy theorist, they're on video. It's not just something that I guessed at. It says, we ship our products globally from inside as well as outside the United States. And if these allegations are true, and they are, these actions will undermine confidence in our industry, which it has done, and in the ability of technology companies to deliver goods globally. And I don't blame the global community for not wanting them. Uh, Chambers wrote that in a letter to our dear leader Obama, we simply cannot operate this way. Our customers trust us to be able to deliver to their doorsteps products that meet the highest standards of integrity and security. We understand that the real and significant threats that exist in the world, but we must also respect the industry's relationship. In other words, the company is trying to pander and say, Hey, you know, we know there's terrorists, but we need you out of our computers. The point is, you're more likely to die of a bee sting than you are to die at the hands of a terrorist. That is mathematically correct. 
Uh, guys, I got a couple more stories I want to get to. This is Kurt Nemo, also from Infowars.com. Second Amendment, clear and present danger in Illinois. An Infowars.com reader has emailed, thankfully, a brochure released by the Illinois Department of Human Services. The brochure describes the responsibility of doctors and healthcare professionals under the Firearm Owner Identification Mental Health Reporting System as part of the Firearm Concealed Carry Act. It's PA 98-063 for those of you that want to look it up. For those of you that don't, uh, the law requires clinicians and uh, facilities to report patients on whom firearms they believe a clear and present danger to themselves and others. This is not about keeping firearms out of the hands of crazy people. How can I say that with such th certainty on my show? I can say that because we already have laws that are very specific that tell doctors that if someone is a clear and present danger to themselves or to others, that they have proper steps are to be taken. However, this is taking it one step further. Any off-the-cuff comment that you make to a medical professional can now be grounds to lose your firearms. That's entirely different. Am I accusing the government of using mental health as a uh, uh, distractionary device to take weapons away from people? Yes, that is exactly what I'm saying. Am I saying that if you have depressive tendencies and you own a gun that you should not seek help within reason? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Because if you do, they're going to take your gun. That is exactly what I'm saying. I'm glad you're paying attention. Uh, IDHS must be notified of anyone who communicates a serious threat of physical or violence against a reasonably identifiable victim or poses a clear and eminent risk of serious physical injury to himself or herself or another person or who demonstrates threatening physical or verbal behavior. What, like swearing? Anger? You, a little bit of swearing, a little bit of anger it automatically means you're a murderer or you should lose your guns. Friends, this is a nightmare and this is why I've repeated over and over again that everyone listening to my voice needs to understand exactly who Adolf Hitler was and what he did. Because there are nuances to be able to talk somebody into taking away their guns and their right to protect themselves. And it's a slippery slope, friends. It works exactly like I laid it out to you. Um, they declare somebody to be mentally insane or mentally incompetent when they are not. And then they use whatever conversation existed as grounds to take the guns from anybody they want, including the vast majority who are just there for garden variety, depression, or anxiety issues. Those people are now going to be um, quite likely losing their guns. They're going to be on watch list. They're going to be everything. Uh, guys, I, that brings me to the dumb D of the day, a CBS Los Angeles DEA to release man mistaken for drug dealer in jail for two weeks. Um, and I know a lot of you are like, well, you know, mistaken identity happens. You can't be too hard on uh, the authority figures. Friends, this is the second time that they arrested the same man because he had his identity stolen. Um, it goes on all the time. If it happened once, I'd be the first to forgive the police. This is the second time it happened. The wife, friends of the gentleman, and the gentleman himself had alerted them with proof that they were not the guilty party. And yet they still kept the person in jail for two weeks before letting them out. <sighs> this is insane, people. And this is why I've been saying for a long time, the war on drugs needs to come to an end. The police are doing us a greater injustice by keeping this going than they are just by illegalizing it, which is what the vast majority of people want, especially once... More and more ridiculous stories like this come to light. Uh, I hate CBS. Anything on CBS, they've always got pop-ups and ads and their videos play. It's awful. 
Uh, this is a uh, Downey. Authorities are releasing a Downey man. They admit accidentally jailing for two weeks when they mistook him for a drug dealer. Gerber Guzman's wife claims it's the second time he's been locked up in the L.A. County Jail when he wasn't and hasn't done anything wrong. After Guzman's April 27th arrest, Yanaira Hernandez tried uh, for more than a week to get him released. The Drug Enforcement Agency responded once CBS uh, KCAL 9 got involved a couple of days ago. And otherwise, he'd still be rotting there like fruit in a crisper. Uh, if they hadn't gotten involved, and that must be why they have so much money to build such an annoying website. Hernandez said that Guzman's identity was stolen six years ago, and that an arrest warrant was mistakenly issued for his arrest. Her, uh, it says she says her husband spent 16 days in L.A. County Jail on drug-related charges before his name was cleared with the help of U.S. Marshals. Well, you know, I think one hell of a good lawsuit that really soaks the city for not listening to the voice of reason would be the cure to this. Friends, you are listening to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGange reporting for The Media Speaks. If you'd like to donate and help me make a better show, go to The Correct Views at Hotmail.com and let me know you want to donate. Every penny you give to me goes to a better show. And a better show is what we all want. It's what I want to give you. Also, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Look at the work of Kyle, Court, D. Lake, and myself. And uh, read the articles, listen to the videos, and by all means, hit share. Because there's nothing that helps us more than when you share our videos. Thank you for doing so, friends. Good night, and God bless.